Good afternoon, Year 3. I'm going to read you your story today. So I have picked There's a Snake in My School by David Walliams. I don't think that we are ever too old for picture books, and I really like this one. I think it would be fantastic if we could all bring our pets into school. So I hope you enjoy this story. Mr Bright had told all the children in his class it was bring your pet to school day. Everyone rushed into the playground to meet the animals. There was a stupidly cute gerbil, a tiny goldfish, a fat cat, a 100 year old tortoise and a tall dog. Last to arrive, as usual, was a girl called Miranda. She was riding on the back of an enormous slithery snake. Meet Penelope, my pet python, announced Miranda. On seeing the snake, the other children screamed, ah! I think I might scream if I saw you bring a snake into school, if I'm honest. Miranda loved being different. She always stood out at school with her individual take on school uniform, her cartwheels down the corridors and her funny answers in class. What ended in 1945? 1944? Ha ha ha. A python is a rather unusual pet, but Miranda and Penelope had so much fun playing together. For the little girl, the snake would pretend to be a scarf, a balloon, a hula hoop, a telescope, a trombone, and sometimes when they were both feeling particularly mischievous, a third arm. Come and give her a tickle, encouraged Miranda, but the other children were too scared. Penelope was a python after all, and pythons eat people. All the pets were frightened too. The large dog yanked on his lead, sending his tiny owner flying. The goldfish tried to hide behind some water. The tortoise made a rather slow run for it. The cute gerbil flashed her gnashes and didn't look so cute anymore. The fat cat just carried on napping. Miranda slid down her snake. The little girl tickled her python under the chin and the snake smiled. See, she's very friendly. Soon everyone was gathered around to marvel at Penelope. The python loved the attention and made a climbing frame for the children to climb on, steps for them to step up and a fireman's pole for them to slide back down. Penelope even helped the children with their numbers although she could only go up to nine. This was turning into the best day of school ever. But then, Miss Bloat, the headmistress, thundered into the playground. There's a snake in my school, she shouted. Miss Bloat didn't like animals much, or children. It's bring your pet to school day, spluttered Mr Bright. And Penelope is my pet, said Miranda. Miranda, I should have known you would have to be different. A snake is not a pet. It's a menace, snapped Miss Bloat. Mr Bright, all these filthy beasts are confiscated. All the girls and boys shouted, no! And confiscated means that they were being taken away. So the headmistress is going to take all the pets away from the children. As the headmistress stuffed their pets into the lost property cupboard. Except for Penelope the snake, Miss Bloat had other ideas for her. This disgusting thing is coming with me, bellowed the headmistress. With that, she dragged the poor python along the corridor to her office. Where are you going to put Penelope? asked Miranda. In the bin. No! Miss Bloat crammed the snake into her bin and slammed the lid shut. Then she plunked herself down on top so the python couldn't escape. The bin rattled and rattled, but Penelope was trapped. A snake in my school indeed. 
get back to your lesson. Downstairs in the classroom, tears rolled down Miranda's cheeks. All the children were sad to have their pets taken away, but no one was sadder than Miranda. The little girl feared she would never see Penelope again. At the end of the day, Miranda dashed upstairs to Miss Bloat's office to try to make her change her mind. There was no answer, so slowly Miranda pushed open the door, only to see Penelope sitting in the headmistress chair. Miranda ran towards her pet and gave her a humongous hug. Can you guess what might have happened? Make a prediction. Why is Penelope in the headmistress chair? Miss Bloat was nowhere to be seen. So the girl grabbed the key on the desk, ran to the lost property cupboard as fast as she could and unlocked it. The animals were overjoyed to be set free. Then Miranda and all the pets slid down Penelope's back into the playground. Whoosh! The children shouted, hooray! Penelope entertained everybody again. She made a seesaw for them to seesaw on, a swing for them to swing on, a wheel for them to roll in, and a skipping rope to skip with. Penelope even helped some of the younger children with the alphabet, although it was hard to do an X. As for Miss Bloat, she had completely disappeared. So Mr. Bright was made headmaster. Now the children were allowed to bring in all their favourite animals whenever they wanted. The school became home to every sort of fantastic creature. An ostrich, a giraffe, a tiger, a gorilla, an elephant, a kangaroo, a crocodile, a grizzly bear and even a colony of penguins. Wow, now that is a cool school. Look at all those animals. I'm not sure how the children learn with all those animals with them every day. But the star attraction was always Penelope. Though Miranda had noticed that there was something different about her python. There was a bulge, a big bulge in the snake's tummy, a bulge in the shape of Miss Bloat. But the little girl thought it best not to say anything. Let me out. So I don't know if you can see, but I think the headmistress might be in Penelope's tummy. So I hope you enjoyed that book and enjoy the rest of your day.